Everybody, welcome to the Tuesday live stream. We got a lot of things to go over, so let's just get into it. So first of all, just like the thumbnail and the title suggest, this was a, an interview and it was timely because we've been talking about the exact same thing about inflation and melt-ups and assets and everything else in between. And this was on Squawk Box as Paul Tudor Jones got interviewed. And just listen to what he says because it makes total sense to me. I don't know about you, but if this is going to happen, which I think it is, it is so important to be into some type of assets as opposed to being just into straight cash. Now, you already know this because you've been on the channel for quite some time. I don't have many tourists. I'm very happy. I'm not looking for the tourists when they do come in, but just take a listen to this and uh, tell me if you don't, if this doesn't resonate with you. Given all of the things you're saying, are you off buying gold and Bitcoin and, and I think all, I think all roads lead to inflation. We're going to end up, if you, so, but does all roads lead to inflation, therefore gold is a good investment? Is Bitcoin a good investment to you? I, I, I'm long gold. I'm long Bitcoin. I think commodities are so ridiculously under-owned. So I'm long commodities. I think most young people find their inflation hedges via the NASDAQ. That's also been great. It's probably some combination. I probably have some basket of gold, Bitcoin, commodities, and NASDAQ, something like that. And I would own zero fixed income. If I had my cash, it would right. be very short term. The playbook to get out of this, you see it in Japan right now. They have 2% inflation, 30, 30 basis points overnight. They don't want to raise rates. The playbook to get out of this is that you inflate your way out. Ugh. That's what's going to happen. So you're going to hear this term. It's going to be called melt up. And essentially what's going to happen is we're going to print money like crazy. And it's not just going to be us. It's going to be across the entire world. And when that happens, you're going to see inflation go up. But it is better to inflate your way out of it and have hyperinflation than to have deflation. Everything kind of collapses. So when I took a look at this, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, this is pretty much what I thought might happen. Now, will this be guaranteed it happens? No, nothing is guaranteed. But you can protect yourself moving forward. Me personally, like when, when Paul was talking about commodities and he was talking, of course, you know, oil is a great thing to, to own. Of course, precious metals, gold and silver. And he talked about gold. This is my IRA, my Roth IRA, my um, retirement account. And we did this, this video about a week and a half ago or so. And I just rebalanced everything. I put most of it in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana ton and gold and silver. And now, you, of course, you can see some meme coins, uh, Pepe, Bonk, Dog with Hat and Doge. That's just because at some point, I'm not holding these till I'm 59 and a half years old. This is a, I think, I still think it's gonna be a meme coin season. You can trade within your Roth IRA. And of course it's tax exempt. So that is why I got more heavily into gold and silver and just cut loose all the losers. Now, the question you have is, well, how silver's doing? Good question. It's at an all time high today. Silver is at an all time high. Gold, all time high. S&P 500, all time high. So actually that's not true. Uh, October 18th was all time high. Not too bad. And then of course, where are we at? We're not doing too shabby. I mean, we're not at 71,000 or 73,000 as of March 13th, but we're doing pretty good. And again, I, you know, you can put it into in, in the cash and, and sit on the sidelines. Me personally, and I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not your dad. This is not financial advice. But when I have funds into my bank, like I do right now, waiting to purchase this, real estate investments, it bothers me greatly because I just look at it. I'm saying to myself, this is inflating away. This is worthless. It has to be an assets as fast as possible. That is just how I see things. Now, I could be wrong. Cash might be king for a bit. I know the DXY is uh, rallying, so things are looking pretty good there. But I'm always more interested in assets than pretty much anything else. And then just to take a look at Bitcoin real quick, uh, congratulations to BlackRock as they crushed it October 19th, they had almost 5,000 Bitcoin inflows. And as a refresher, we are at three, almost 350,000 Bitcoin. That's crazy. And uh, the Ethereum ETF, not so good. It looked like uh, yesterday, uh, Grayscale does what Grayscale does, which is dump on us. So the total net flow right now is negative 488. So, you know, good luck with uh, everything that's going on with uh, Ethereum. But again, I think you did a great job. Like buying in the bear market and being here, congratulations, because that's not easy. And I think that the asset holders will be rewarded eventually as we start to inflate like crazy, but I could be wrong. 
So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Now let's go into a little bit of altcoin. So alt, I have a soft spot for them. I'm not uh, saying that you should get, get into them right now, but I've been buying. I've been buying for quite some time. And this was a, a piece that looks like Avalanche or AVAX, which everybody is uh, is all enamored with. And that is, and for good reason, because they just came out with this great game called Off the Grid. It has a uh, high praise by traditional gamers, Web3 gamers, and it's been doing pretty great. Avalanche just looks like a very stable layer one solution. And now they just rolled out that with new AVAX launches Visa card for crypto payments. And I thought, well, that's interesting. How does that work? So there's a website called Avalanche Card. I didn't put it in the description, but you can search for it. Avalanchecard.com. And when you go for here, I guess there's a wait list. And I was thinking about it myself, and I just have a question for everybody. Let's just be real. Do you want to sell your AVAX and use it for payments? I guess some people do. There's a big thumb up on my screen. But I'm looking at this, I'm like, I don't know if I would do that. I mean, maybe like in some places it's great. And I think it would be great if you had like multi-chain, you could see, you pick what it is. But I'm just looking at this and I'm like, I wonder who's gonna sign up for this. Cause I, like me personally, I'm not here to use it as a payment processor. Although I will say if you could use, I mean, AVAX is extremely cheap to use and they do have USDC, so that's pretty good. I think that will be an incentive for maybe businesses to accept crypto payments. Because if you don't know, you don't have a business. So when you have the payment processor, usually the Rails or Stripe, Visa, MasterCard, whatever, they're gonna take like 2.99%. If you're a big baller, they might take less than that under a percentage, but they're gonna cost, they're gonna charge you around 1% plus X amount cents per transaction. So usually it's like 2.99% plus 30 cents per, per transaction. If you were a business owner, you hate that. I hate that personally, because I'm like, damn it, I got to pay these guys just for the rails. But if you could do something like this, I could say, hey, look, I'll give you a percentage off if you keep using this. The only way this works in my mind, and, and you're welcome to sound off, but in my mind, the only way this works is if businesses start to accept it and say, oh, well, this is, I, I like this Visa card because I don't have to pay so much in transaction fees. Because remember, there's, there's two things here. If you're transferring AVAX over, that's on you right? It's cheap. But then if Visa is going to also pay, also going to charge the business, then that's double dipping. Well, essentially, but not really. So I just kind of see this. And I'm like, maybe people will use it. It sounds good. The narrative's there. Fantastic. But I just, I don't know. Sometimes I look at this, I'm like, I don't know. And another thing is you have to think about is taxes. So, you know, when you take, let's say you buy AVAX at, I don't know what the heck it is, 10 bucks, right? And then you go to buy coffee and uh, your AVAX is now $15 for one AVAX or whatever it is. When you pay for products in that situation in America, I don't know how it is everywhere else, you're going to get taxed on that. So I took a look here and it says, bah, 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 bah. what about taxes? We recommend that you speak with a tax professional regarding circumstances with the Avalanche card. Spending against USDC generally does not have tax implications. It could. Spending against other crypto assets may involve selling your assets. So what they're saying is here is if you have USDC, only USDC, usually it's not crypto. Well, it is crypto, but it's peg of the dollar, so it should be around a dollar. However, if you're, an a, if you're using AVAX and you're transferring over to USDC, that is a taxable event. So just so you know, if you're taking USDC and using the AVAX rails, sure, I got you. But AVAX, you're going to pay. Selling crypto assets can be a taxable event. Oh, this is good. Are there fees? There are no fees when you're spending asset with the Avalanche card. Oh, I didn't know that. For a full list of card and service fees, please see our card terms. I bet you if you take a look at those terms, it might be something different. So I applaud Avalanche for doing this. I just don't know if people are going to use it. I mean, maybe for like the USDC aspect of it, I can get that, but who knows? Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments. That'll be interesting. And then also Monero. I found this fascinating because I don't have all the details on this one because the Japanese authorities did not release all the, the details. But remember, Monero is out there as the number, I want to say it's the old school number one um, 
crypto digital asset that is supposed to be untraceable. Well, Japanese authorities trace Monero, arrest 18 in a laundering case. Not for a lot, but I'm just saying, if you think Monero is untraceable, I guess not. And again, I don't have all the, uh, all the details. It's not like the Japanese authorities are gonna tell us, but here's what we have. Japanese authorities arrested a gang of 18 alleged scammers by analyzing Monero transactions for the first time in crypto history. Japanese authorities said they analyzed about 900 of the group's Monero-based laundering, money laundering transactions, which total about 100 million yen. This marked the first time the country's law enforcement agencies had used Monero transactions to identify criminals. Point Telegraph asked Japanese authorities about their analysis of the Monero transactions led to the arrest, but received no immediate reply. Why would you say this is how we did it so, you, so other people can get around it? Come on, that's not gonna happen. So. I'd like to hear more information on it as it comes out, but I'm just saying, that's just the news. Don't shoot the messenger, that's what it is. And that's pretty much it for today. Last things I'll say is this. Thanks to everybody who signed up for the Blue Whale AI node whitelist. Now we had quite a bit of people. I blocked out your emails, but I got a bunch of, uh, I whitelisted all of that for the node cell which is going today. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Blue Whale is essentially, it's able to supercharge like this one. Supercharge DAP to reach wallet holders with rewards. Essentially, it is what Facebook could have been if they were honest and didn't screw you over and take your data and sell all the corporations. That's essentially what Bluewell is going to do. They're going to not screw you over. They're actually going to share revenue with you for your wallets. And they use AI to do those types of things. Node sales going on right now. I got you whitelisted for a small, a uh, lesser tier, so it's less money. Plus, you get a discount just by using Dan, and you can go from there. So links in the description. But again, this was uh, a video we did on the weekend. So congratulations, everybody who got whitelisted because I can only give away 40, so sorry. And then lastly, well, last, last, this, this was just actually brought to my attention by Uzi. Uzi, thank you for showing me this. Joe Rogan's gonna interview Trump on his podcast on Friday. And I know if, unless you love Trump, or you hate Trump, you know you're gonna watch it. You know you're gonna watch most of this stuff. You're gonna watch it to either, to either cheer Trump or to jeer him. One of those two things, and I just found it fascinating because we were talking about this on Polymarket, and we had talked about this last week, and I said, hey, Polymarkets, they've, they've got the percentage of like 70% chance as Trump going on Joe Rogan. I go, you know, you should probably get into that. And of course, now it just broke, so yeah. Well, when we talked about it, it was like a 70% chance, now it's 94%, so. Interesting, interesting how that uh, came to fruition. And that's it for today, so look. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you wanna go over a little q and I'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities and uh, we'll go from there. So thanks so much. If you gotta take off, take off, I appreciate you.